Well, good day, viewers. Welcome to To It For Media. I am your host, Kamal Haynes. And today we will be featuring three special guests from the BVI Electricity Corporation who will be giving us an in-depth look at their recently launched business continuity support project. But they are Kelvin Eubanks, Information Technology Manager, Ms. Tamika Herbert, Network and Telecommunications Administrator, and Ms. Sonia Penn, Billing and Customer Service Supervisor. We get to all those details when we return. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. Welcome back viewers. As promised, I have at least two of those three guests mentioned prior to the break with us. Welcome Mr. Eubanks as well as uh, Ms. Herbert. Thank you for joining us and I'm guessing you guys are here to obviously spread the message about this new program uh, from the BPA Electricity Corporation. Yes, come on. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, so the Business Continuity Support Project is a project that was born out of uh, disasters or, or experience from disasters, uh, particularly in 2017 when we had the hurricanes Irma and Maria mm -hmm. that devastated you know, the island. Uh, everybody's familiar with that. And uh, in 2019, 2020, we had the COVID-19 pandemic where everyone was essentially uh, forced to stay home and could move around. So what happened with the corporation, essentially what we're looking at is being able to operate during these disruptions, during these times that you know people can't move around and so forth. So the government of France, uh, expertise France, have an arm that, uh, well, it's an acronym, RESEMBID, for resilience, sustainability, and marine biodiversity. And what they do, they sponsor programs or projects in what they call the overseas uh, Caribbean territories. Mm -hmm. uh, so we applied, the corporation applied to Resembit for funds to uh, engage in this project that we hope will make us more resilient, more flexible, mm -hmm. and um, be able to sustain uh, our service to, to customers. And speak about how long, um, I'm sure obviously it's now the inception of the project, but so far, how, how long has it been um, initiated here in the BVI? Well, the project itself was properly initiated in September 2022. Mm -hmm. However, we had some changes at the, the head of the organization. So we didn't actually get going until December uh, 2022. Mm. Uh, we the project is a 19 month project, and we are expected to finish at the end of April this year. Mm -hmm. And after April this year, what will happen? What will that look like? Well, they, they, we are looking for the the results of the project uh, to sustain those results, uh, to sustain operations in the manner that uh, that we have certainly defined uh, during the project. So in other words, uh, we will have no more flexibility for people to work remotely mm. outside of the office and be able to service our customers' calls, issues, 
you know, whatever problems are, are you know, uh, things that need to be dealt with, mm-hmm. we'll be able to deal with that regardless of where our staff are physically located. Mm-hmm. And as you said, just as you said, by um, in, a, in a few months' time, that will come the end of the project. But mm-hmm. I'm sure, obviously, that would initiate now in terms of the purpose of the project, in terms of uh, fostering that remote uh, communication with the public, the customers mm. of the BVIEC, mm. um, in the event of, as you said, uh, situations such as the pandemic or uh, natural disasters. But in the meantime, in terms of how has testing been going, is it a situation where some of the staff presently would work remotely to test uh, whether the program or whether the project is actually functioning? Yeah. So at this point in time, we, we are in what we call the pilot program, mm-hmm. where we are testing uh, systems that were put in place. So we had two major systems that we put in place. We put a, a remote monitoring system that monitors the engines uh, from outside. We do have what we call a SCADA system where are controlled, you know, engines are computerized nowadays. Mm-hmm. So uh, we are able to monitor you know, temperature, fluid levels, pressure, and so forth from the control room in Pakut Pan, where the engines are. We have installed uh, essentially an extension to that so that now we can see those same monitors from outside of the control room, whether it be back in Longbush or whether it be at, you know, a remote location outside of the the offices of the corporation. Mm. The second system we put in was an electronic customer service center. That system now collects the information uh, from customers. So if you have an issue, um, a fault, uh, you know, um, it, lack of electricity for whatever reason, you can go on our website now, log that call, and uh, our customer service representatives, uh, of which Ms. Tanya heads, she they will pick up those calls, act on those calls, and get back to the customer uh, with the results of those of those issues. So right now, what we have, we have a group of people that are actually working remotely outside of the office, working from home, actually picking up these calls, and we have set up you know our, our processes behind the scenes to pick up these calls, act on it. Nothing falls, you know, through the cracks or anything like that. And um, we efficiently try and get back to the customer by, you know, trying to solve the problems or addressing the issues that they have when they log the, these calls. Mm-hmm. And I know you mentioned about monitoring the systems here on Tatola. Uh, will that also apply for Virgin Garda and, and Joss Van Dyke as well? Well, in, in Virgin Garda, not, not at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Because what we currently have are the monitoring systems for our power engines, the power generation engines. Mm-hmm. Those engines are currently only located on Tartola. We do have, I think, two engines mm-hmm. there are on Anigada, much smaller engines. But the major output is right now on Tartola. Mm-hmm. So we only need to monitor those engines at this time. In terms of the electrical network now that will involve Virgin Garda, uh, just one day, as you asked, that system is to come and stream maybe another year, year and a half, Mm -hmm. which is actually separate from the project, but is affected by the project. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Herbert, obviously as the network and telecommunications administrator, tell me about your role in the project. I did everything on the project, so to speak. Um, I've been on the project from when it was just an idea up until the tender process. And now the pilot program that we have staff working from home and we're testing the software that we're now testing the software that they'll be using to get the um, project going. So you said you've been hands-on with this particular project from day one. Uh, can you speak to some of the benefits so the public can be aware of the benefits of this particular project when it comes to not only the BVI Electricity Corporation, but also customers of the corporation that will be benefiting from this as well? Well, customers will definitely benefit from this in 
wait time. Mm -hmm. We'll cut down wait time. Productivity, of course, coming from our side. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll have a log and we'll be able to keep track of customer queries and even if we don't get to them at the moment, at least we have them to go back to so that we can assist them where possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure which of you two could assist me as well too when it comes to my next question, but I know over the last few months there was like a WhatsApp chat that the media was also a part of that like um, in almost instantaneously when there's a power outage, we'll mm -hmm. be updated of the power outage, the reason behind it, and you know when it's back up as, as well. Is that part of that particular project, or is that a, a second, uh, a different initiative? That itself is a different initiative. Mm. Uh, we do have a lot of things planned um, around this project. Mm. Um, one of those initiatives is certainly keeping customers more aware of what's happening with the corporation and what's happening you know, and the electrical network throughout the territory. So that was an initiative uh, by the senior management that just wanted to keep the media and everyone informed of what's going on, especially, you know, the issues we've been having with Just Van Dyke and so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, so, but that is actually a separate initiative from this project. Mm. And just to paint a more vivid picture regarding this project, walk me through um, an example as it relates to uh, a, a day of operating this particular project. How does it really go? Um, give me a, a scenario, for example, that helps the viewers understand the, the, the dynamics of this particular project. Okay. So uh, in a nutshell, as I said, uh, we, we're making ourselves more flexible, right, to deal with customers' issues. So a uh, uh, customer will connect to our website and they will uh, log a call. We have, I think, seven or eight different uh, categories mm. that you, you, know, you can select when you log the call. Uh, one of the things that we will need is the account number of the customer. Mm -hmm. So once they have logged that call, it goes into our, the same electronic system and our customer service representatives behind the scenes will pick up on these calls. We have people working at home, as I said. The system is a cloud-based system, so we'll connect to the cloud. That person at home connects as well, and uh, they can pick up those calls. Mm -hmm. During the hurricanes in 2017, um, Certainly one of the first services to come up was the, the cellular, the phone services. Mm -hmm. And this is good because then it enables internet service and internet access and so forth. The system is mobile friendly. So you can do it from your phone. You can log calls from your phone as well. You don't have to be in front of a computer or so, all right? And uh, what we've done, we've adjusted, as I said, our, our back office processes so that when that customer service person picks up that call, they can route it to whether it's an uh, engineering matter. Mm -hmm. They route it to the transmission and distribution department or the billing section, you know, might be an issue with a bill or, you know, any other, any other section that's related uh, to, the, to the call itself. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, uh, the customer service keep, representative keeps track of the status of these things. Mm -hmm. And they will, in fact, get back to the customer. Whether if the situation is fixed, you know, they call and say, all right, are you okay now? Or we advise you if, you know, uh, you can go uh, on the status of the, 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 the call that you made. Whether it can go further or if there's other work that needs to be done on it. The uh, people will either be working remotely or working in the office. Mm. So when you log that call, it'll be seamless to you. You won't know who will be dealing with the, with the, the, the issue, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we want to make sure that it's dealt with regardless of where our customer services people are. Mm. And in a nutshell, that's what gives us the flexibility uh, to deal with these calls. So provided um, the remote persons with laptops and phones, and you know, whatever other related equipment that they need so that they can connect to the system, address the calls, keep in touch with the, the, the other staff, the remaining staff, or you know, the field staff, the engineers, and 
we coordinate the efforts so that we can uh, address the cause on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. So, so f in other words, for example, let's say um, in my neighborhood, there's an electrical outage, um, there's no power. Um, mm -hmm. I'll then use my mobile device, go on the website, log the information, basically reporting this. I'm mm -hmm. sure that, uh, will it be like a, a section of the website that stands out that will let me know this is the area that I need to, to go to be able to um, basically launch my, my, my complaint? Yeah, yeah. There is a green help button on the page. It appears on the lower right-hand side of the page, mm -hmm. whether you're on the computer or whether you're, you're on your phone. I will add also that uh, the website isn't the only way that you can get in contact that with us. That was going to be my next well. question as well, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can call directly our number, 8524600. And we have set up a facility that after hours, you can call up to 9 o'clock, you get customer service, and they will deal with whatever issue it is that you have that's uh, related to, let's say, you know, you, you didn't pay your bill, uh, you pay it now and you know you might need to get reconnected or whatever other issue. The calling in has an option. Option one, I believe, is transmission and distribution. Mm. This is the, like the automated service that you. This is automated service okay. now after hours, mm. up to well, up to nine o'clock you get customer service. Twenty-four hours, you get an engineer from transmission and distribution department. Um, they can only deal with faults, though, right? They can't restore your power. So you can, you have up to nine o'clock to call if you have if you have an issue with your power to restore it. Okay. Otherwise, after nine, we have to wait till the next morning. Mm -hmm. But if there is a fault in your area, like a you know a transformer blow or something, and multiple people are out, then our engineers can handle that part of it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I, I do know uh, what when you said just now, uh, after 9 p.m., if your power is out, you have to wait till the next morning. I know, I, know there, I've, I know in the past there have been instances where, you know, you guys were on the job 12 a.m., mm -hmm. 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. in the morning, basically restoring um, power. all depends on, as you said, the magnitude of the outage as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question is in terms of so far in testing this pilot um, project, what are the, the most reported um, issues through the website and or calls? Uh, Sonia, we'll, we'll have to answer that one. I haven't um, been through the system to, you know, to, the, to kind of filter all the calls, but certainly that's something that we can do. Um, we've only had the, the testing on for last week. We last started last week. Okay. So we, we're into the second week of the testing. Mm -hmm. um, we have been getting calls. Um, as, as suppose as people get more used to the system and we're encouraging customers to use the online facility as mm -hmm. well. You know, it will save you the trip having to come down or if you call for whatever reason you can get, you know, uh, the receptionist because there might be a lot of other calls, you can go into the system and, and type in your issue. And you spoke about ResinBid being part of the program in terms of funding this pro this project. Mm -hmm. um, just give us, uh, if, you, if you can, uh, what does such a project cost to be funded? Uh, I'm sure it, it, mm -hmm. In my estimation, it sounds like it's a very big project. Well, it, 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 it's big enough. Uh, it's not the biggest project. Mm -hmm. um, it's only about 245,000 euro. Mm -hmm. That uh, that it's it's well certainly resembled as donated, mm -hmm. and that we had projected that we needed to to enact the project. That covers things like you know purchasing the new software, the uh, the remote monitoring, you know um, getting equipment and so forth for the the remote work and so. So um, this this budget isn't coming out of our budget. So that, that won't be passed on to any customers or anything like that. So you can rest assured you won't be paying extra for this mm -hmm. uh, project. Uh, as I say, you know, reason be they are the donors. Um, f from out of the, the, the government of France. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have provided us with project support as well. You know, so we have to report to them. Um, they are in some of our project meetings. 
and they do play a stake, they play a part in ensuring that the project is completed. There's actually another entity here that they also sponsor um, that deals with, I believe it's a school schooling project that they're dealing with. So they are present in the BVI and you know the region as well. Hmm. And any final words you guys would like to add on your project before uh, we get to the billing and supervise, um, customer service supervisor uh, Ms. Penn? Well, certainly we do want the customers to know that uh, you know we're seeking to improve our service to our customers. And we're doing this by ensuring that in suboptimal circumstances, you know, such as the disaster, the hurricane, the pandemic, that we can still maintain a quality of service to the customers. When we return, we will have uh, Ms. Sonia Penn, a billing and customer service supervisor, to provide some more details regarding this project, but more so from the customer service uh, perspective. Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. 284 Media proudly presents The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman with yours truly, Ron Grant, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Don't worry, it's not all about suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 5, a 284 Media production. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> Alonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Bream. It bites. It will bite. Bring... <laughs> <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies, and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Welcome back, viewers. As promised, I have with me uh, Miss Sonia Penn. She is the Billing and Customer Service Supervisor at the BVI Electricity Corporation. And obviously, you're here to speak about the business continuity uh, project uh, from your uh, point of view. So your colleagues would have basically give a, an in-depth over, overlook as it relates to outlook as it relates to you know what the program entails so from your perspective and your point of view in terms of what areas of the program or the project are you involved with okay um thank you for having me um so i was involved in terms of the setup of the online as it regards to doing training and making suggestions of information that is required so that we are better able to serve the customers and that was for about a month. And from there, about the monitoring system, because right now, as my colleagues spoke about, we have a pilot program going on right now. So there are persons within my unit who are working remotely. Um, in terms of the information coming in from the public, we have different ways, such as phone calls, emails, going through the little help icon on the website. Mm -hmm. And with this information, we are able to, for example, anything that relates to my areas, I can see live. Mm -hmm. So I am able to view that either through the email, it will come directly to me once a customer goes on and inputs a ticket, mm -hmm. performs a ticket. And also we are able to have it as an app so I currently have it as an app on my phone. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what time of day that customer puts that 
information in there, I am going to receive it as long as it deals with my area. Mm. Um, for example, as we were stating with the power outages, um, that will go directly by the supervisor responsible is also going to see that information to be able to dispatch his team. So it's a way in which there are no drawbacks really. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of trying our best to assist the customers as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about just now, uh, while we during the break, as it relates to uh, even after hours, yes. you know, you guys will still be addressing uh, power outages. Um, we currently have an after hour program where we have two options. When you call our number after 4.30, which is 852-4600, option one is for faults. And that is available from 4.30 in the afternoon until 8.30 in the morning when we reopen and also all weekend. Option two is if you have an issue with uh, disconnection to see whether you were disconnected or say you were disconnected and you paid your bill and you need some assistance to like find out when you'll be reconnected. Um, it's really not a situation where you can call and have your system reconnected, but the person on the other end will be able to know if they will be able to assist you because depending on the time, because our guys are not out there 24 seven if it's a manual meter. But if you have one of the remote meters, they will be able to assist you up until nine o'clock mm. once they're available. Okay, and in terms of, uh, you would have also spoken about you, you being involved with the design of, of the website. And we do know when it comes to rolling out new projects, uh, ensuring that the websites and the apps are user friendly are key in terms of having yes. customers interacting and being um, actually utilizing these um, mm -hmm. different components. Right. So as we said, we are going through a pilot program right now. So we're still tweaking, seeing what can work and what cannot work. So in terms of assisting, I want to, we wouldn't be able to better assist the customers. We would need to get some sort of information from you. So if you can obtain your account number or the meter number, we are better able to, you know, figure out what's happening right away instead of having to be searching by names and all these different things. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, to give us feedback and also to get information back to you, we require that you give us your email address so that we have some sort of relationship form there that we can figure out whether your matter was actually resolved or if it's still pending because the system have a set of where we know everyone is going to put their priority as high, but it also allows us to know, hey, whether it's a ticket still open, if it's still pending or if it's closed and it keeps a history of everything that is happening. So currently, while I was awaiting my colleagues, um, I, was, I actually got an alert on my phone that alerted me that a ticket was created by the customer service rep, and it came in for a matter to be dealt with. So I was actually responding at the same time, and as I said, I'm not in the office, but if my representatives cannot deal with it, they would escalate it. So it was escalated to me, so I got the alert again because it was escalated. So I was actually responding to the customer so that they know what is required of them so that we are better able to assist them and I'm not even in the office. Mm -hmm. And in particular, that I'm sure obviously that particular aspect of the program or the, is more so because of your seniority in terms of your role. Yes. Because I'm sure uh, I'm, when it comes to working remotely, there are pros and cons. Yes. Um, and, and I'm sure in terms of this particular project, mm -hmm. um, there are certain rules uh, and certain um, protocols in place to ensure that there's no burnout as well. Yes. I'm not sure if you can speak about that as well too. <laughs> Well, in actuality, um, with the areas of my concern, um, right now I have a billing officer who is currently working remotely to make sure that that side is still continuing. I also have the collections officer who is currently out, so we're still having disconnections and everything's still happening. Um, and I also have customer service representative out, so I'm still having someone contacting customer that they can readily, whether they need to know a bail amount, if they need some assistance with setting up an account, all these different things. So I am actually being able to monitor three different areas, mm -hmm. right? And in terms of assisting customers and making sure that business 
but as you said, it's business continuity that we're still operating as normal mm -hmm. from on the outside. And um, I, I would have asked your colleague this question initially, but they would have pointed me your direction. Um, what is the, the, the most frequent um, complaint logged so far? I know it's only a week so far, but what is the most frequent complaint logged? If you, or if you can give me a top two or three. Well, one of them ma mainly is just persons trying to find out their bill mm -hmm. amounts. And we try to encourage customers to register their accounts online. Because by doing so, it also saves you from calling or even waiting in a queue to get that information. Because once you register your accounts online, you can view your, your bills, you can print your bill, and you could also pay your bill, mm -hmm. right? So that's one of the things we try to do. Like yesterday, I tried assisting when one of the logs came in. They actually have an online account, but they just needed a password reset. Mm. And we were able to still tell them the amount of their bill and also address another issue by resetting their password. Mm. So now we have that log, but at the same time, that customer wouldn't have to call again mm. to do that. They could actually view the bill and even pay the bill at the same time. Mm. And as it relates to that as well, if you could give, I'm not sure if you have this stat in your head, your head at the present moment, mm -hmm. but what percentage of the BVI would you say presently have online accounts when it comes to bills? Um, I think we can say more than 60%. Mm. I think we can. Yeah, we have more than 60% currently registered and we continue to encourage persons to register. Um, and as I said, as my colleagues also stated, this program also have other little programs on the side happening to better serve customers. Mm. And I know there were a lot of complaints about persons in terms of having to pay a bill and another one already met the other bill and all that stuff and they want to be able to just pay one bill. But in actuality, when it all boils down, that one bill is already past due. Hence, there is more than one bill on the account. Mm. So some don't like the fact that they have to pay both bills online. So there are different aspects that we are looking at currently, and we are taking those things into consideration and trying to walk around and do our best in terms of finalizing everything in offering the best service we can. Mm. And another question from the perspective of bills, um, how likely are persons to get through from, from, let's say, you know, you have a bill, you know, the amount looks a little questionable, mm -hmm. you know, you say, well, I didn't use, uh, to my estimation, <laughs> I did not use this amount of, of watts or mm -hmm. whatever the case is. Kilowatts. Kilowatts this month, so this must be wrong. They, they call, what are the, the likelihood of you actually getting compensated if it's a situation where it's an error on you guys and, or is it a situation where the majority of times it be, um, you know, okay, well, this is this is the this is the bill. You justify a reason why the person should go go forward and pay for pay for it regardless. Okay, well, in a situation like that, um, being the supervisor, once it is escalated to me, um, I would normally have an investigation done. Mm -hmm. um, I try to do those investigations at the same time or within twenty four hours. And if it involves me going out in the field and checking for myself with one of my guys, I will do that. Or I would involve someone from the TND department who would go and actually check the different aspects of the meter. Um, at the same time, we have a system in place where majority of the, the meters are read from the office. So I am able to just sit at my desk and log in and look at the history of a bill, of a meter reading, which I also had an investigation today, actually before I came. And the customer complained that they were not here for a duration of time and the bill is so high. And we review the history of the billing in terms of the average usage. And that was the first red flag to say, hey, this is not a normal bill for this customer, right? So what I did, I sat down and I went through day by day each day in terms of the different readings and I actually found where the spike was. So in terms of that now, we also have where TND will go and make their final checks and then it will come back to me and adjustments are made based on both findings. We mm. do adjust those bills. So it's not a situation where um, we just say it's too high and that's the bill, you know, but we actually go through different processes 
to actually validate to see what's happening before a final decision is made. Mm -hmm. And currently, in terms of, we do know one of the one of the major issues when it comes to uh, customer service or any company per mm -hmm. se, when it comes to paying bills and BVI, etc., is lines. Mm -hmm. We do know long lines. Presently, do the BVIC have a, a, a situation where there are long lines still um, for when it comes to close to the end of the month when these bills are due? And what are uh, the plans to ensure that this particular project helps with reducing that um, those those numbers when it comes to persons having to go in, as you said, 60% of the BVI population and estimated 60% uh, are online. They have the online access, which means they should be able to, to pay online yes. as well. How can we get to that point where the majority of persons are also utilizing the online services to pay their bills as opposed to having them to frequent the physical um, facility? Okay, well, right now we are currently going through some minor constructions to better serve the public, and we do want to thank you for your patience. Um, presently, we, in the past, we did like a little drive where we had the customer service reps assisting persons setting up to set up their accounts online and everything. But you know, at some point, some person just like come into the office, mm. right? But at the same time, we try to encourage persons to pay their bills on time because a lot of what I have been seeing is persons are not paying their bills on time. Hence, it's creating a situation where one bill is meeting another bill, as I explained before. And we are currently working on that aspect to try and better assist them in that on that side. But at the same time, um, if you have an issue, if customers have an issue, even setting up, or customer service representatives are in a position to do it for them. Mm -hmm. And all they would have to do is just log in and pay the bill. Um, we also try to, I think, we plan to have another one of those drives in mm -hmm. terms of having a customer service rep or someone just concentrate fully on assisting customers registering online to pay. And one of the things I have seen is with the after hour program that we have, the call center in the evenings, we have persons who forget to pay their bills and they're disconnected. Mm -hmm. And in that aspect, they have to register online mm -hmm. if they want their account reconnected. So that aspect too also helps us to have persons register online, um, which some of them even realize how easy it was to be able to pay to get their, their power restored mm -hmm. um, before the next day. So I think by having another drive, we'll try to help, but we're trying our best to try and push for persons not to come to the office, but can actually, as I said, go online and view their bill. They can print it out if they want to, um, but so they don't have to come and still go to customer service when they come to just go straight to the cashier, mm -hmm. um, even if they don't want to pay it online. So that's another option. Um, at the same time, paying online helps in a lot of ways. Um, you can see a record of your payments. Um, you can also monitor your usage per month. So there's a lot of different things you can get from actually registering online. Mm -hmm. And persons can also visit our website, um, bbielectricity.com, which also offers tips on how to save in terms of energy. It also gives them information about their cycles, also gives them information about understanding their bills. And I think once they are fully educated in that sense, they would cut down the line, long lines in terms of coming to the office. Okay, and because the reason I asked that question too, because I know there are some companies, especially when they're now launching certain initiatives, there are certain um, incentives that they offer. Mm -hmm. For example, they may say uh, within the first three months, you know, they're given 5% for persons who tend to pay their bills online, you know, you see how many people would then flop the website, basically probably crash the website well, to pay their bills online. Well, that, that's out of, of my <laughs> portfolio. But as I said, it's convenience, mm -hmm. right? And I work at BVI Electricity and I tend not to pay my bill at the office. I'm right there and I will log in whether on my phone or whether on my computer and I will pay my bill mm -hmm. because as I said, it's a matter of convenience and 
you right there. You don't have to be looking for receipts. You don't have to be looking for all these different things, even to try and monitor what your usages are. You have that all in the portal on the website. So mm -hmm. you don't have to try and keep track of your receipts to give to anybody, like to your landlord or whatever. Everything is there. So I think person is user friendly. And I think even if persons just need assistance setting up, they can call or they can log one of those tickets on our site or they can just visit our office and any one of the customer service reps can assist. Okay, excellent. Any final words you want to leave with the BVI public regarding this initiative? Well, basically, we're just trying our best, as I said, to offer a better service to you and encouraging you kindly to please visit our website at bvielectricity.com and try to register your account so that you are able to view your bills, print your bills, and also pay your bills. Okay, excellent. Well, I want to thank you, Ms. Penn, as well as your colleagues, um, Mr. Eubanks and Ms. Herbert as well, for joining us here and spreading the message about the business continuity uh, project by the BBI Electricity Corporation. Um, hopefully, you, the viewers, um, are in tune and, and would have picked up a lot of knowledge and also uh, a lot of words of encouragement to basically get in tune with the tech, this technolo technological age that we're in and basically utilize this program as um, Ms. Penn said, is designed to benefit you, the public. So viewers, until next time, I'm Kamal Haynes. Hope you enjoy the content. Bye-bye.